Hey, it's Derek from CG Shortcuts, and today we're going to do this. I'll show you how to control render quality with just one slider instead of Redshift, and we'll also create some Redshift presets to speed things up even more, and we're gonna use the built-in denoisers and troubleshoot some common issues that those can cause. Be sure to check out the Redshift Materials Masterclass that's now available on CG Shortcuts. We go over almost every node inside of there. There are 50 amazing Redshift materials as well as seven Redshift projects that you'll get included in the course. It's on cgshortcuts.com. All right, let's get back to the tutorial. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do before we get into our tips is I'm just gonna say that I understand that Redshift can be really overwhelming. So we're not gonna go in depth about a lot of stuff today with Redshift render settings. What we're going to provide today is a foundation of understandings and some presets. That way, when you open up Cinema 4D, you can focus on creating your scene. And when it comes time to render time, you can just click a preset, click render, and you'll be good to go. As well as just a basic understanding for some problem solving to get rid of some noise and speed up your renders as well. The first thing we should do is create presets. Open up the render settings with Control B. So by default, Cinema 4D opens up as the standard render. We want to go up here and change our render engine to Redshift. And down here, you'll see you have my render settings. You can double click this and type in very high Redshift. Now Redshift has two tabs, basic and advanced. Redshift by default has automatic sampling enabled. Now I was super skeptical about this at first, but honestly, I've been converted. It's kind of amazing. Basically, it adjusts the samples based on the needs of the scene to stay under a certain threshold of noise. So we go into the advanced tab here, you see that under automatic sampling, we have a threshold slider. Simplified, the lower the threshold value, the cleaner the render, but the longer it will take. The higher the value, the faster it will render, but the noisier it will be. So to reiterate, low threshold value means it has a low tolerance for noise, so it will increase the samples you need to reduce the amount of noise in your render. And a higher threshold value means it will allow more noise in your scene to keep your samples lower and your render times shorter. More samples equals longer render times, but a cleaner image. Fewer samples mean faster, and but more noise. So basically, if you're brand new to Redshift or Cinema 4D or rendering in general, the automatic sampling in Redshift provides you with the option to literally control the way your render is going to look with a slider and even some presets. So you don't have to mess with any other settings, but this to get a clean result, which is really impressive for a 3D render engine. There are ways to get a clean fast image with a higher threshold value. And I'll show you how to do that in just a moment. First thing I like to do is I go over to the advanced tab and I go to global illumination. I like to use brute force, brute force. Instead, it's faster than the irradiance point cloud and it's still very accurate. Now we have the number of rays here that we can adjust here, but if we're using automatic sampling, it actually controls this as well, which is really nice. Lastly, let's go back to the basic tab and there's a box here called hardware ray tracing if available. Make sure you check this box if you have an RTX card. This will really unlock the power of your RTX card and it actually does speed up your render and it makes a pretty big speed boost. Now, if you don't have an RTX card, this isn't gonna do anything. Now, all of these settings we've been adjusting here are for the bucket rendering. Now, when you're opening up your render view, you hit render, you'll see that it automatically makes these little squares. These are called buckets and it uses bucket rendering by default. But if you hit this little play button and use the IPR preview, you don't see these buckets. So we're not actually using any of the settings we used. We're using progressive pass. To use the bucket rendering, you need to go over here and click these squares here. This will enable bucket rendering with the IPR. Okay, so in our Redshift render settings here, let's go ahead and click very high preset. You'll see that that changed the threshold to 0 0.001, which is as low as it goes. Let's hit render. Okay, it took five minutes and 39 seconds, but we have a very clean render, very little noise, and most often reflections and shadows are the areas where you're gonna see the most noise. Now, let's hit this little plus sign up here to take a snapshot of this so we can compare it in a minute. Let's go back to the render editor, control click drag this preset to create a new one that's already set to redshift and everything. We're gonna go back here and we're gonna click the low preset. And if you go to the advanced tab, you can see that that raised the threshold up to 0.1. So you can get a gauge on how very small changes in a value can make a very big difference in your scene and the amount of noise and render time. But we're actually gonna raise this up even higher and we're gonna set it all the way up to one. Let's go ahead and hit render. Four seconds. 
but it's really noisy here. The shadows in the mouth and also all the shadows and the reflections and just overall, it's very noisy, which was to be expected. Now, this is where the magic of denoising comes in. Check denoising. Here we have three options. All of them are good. Optics is the fastest and easiest to use, but Alta Single and Dual are really good. They take a bit longer, but they can save you some detail sometimes. And we'll cover that in a minute. We're gonna use Optics for now. We're gonna hit Render, 12 seconds. That's still really fast for a really clean render. This looks really good, but there's actually a trick to get Optics to go even faster. And that's here in the Advanced tab. There's a setting called Bucket Denoise Overhead. By default, it's at 10 which means it's gonna to try to denoise it as it's progressively rendering. But we actually wanna take that all the way down to zero, so it won't denoise it until it's done rendering, and that will actually speed up our render times. So take that down to zero, click render again, six seconds. That's twice as fast. So here we can see that our floor looks really clean, our mouth shadows are really clean. It's, it doesn't really make sense how good it is. So we'll take a snapshot of these of this as well. And then to compare these two, we can select our snapshot, hit set A, and then our other one will say set B. And now we can use this slider. A is on the left, that's our very high setting versus our super, super low setting. And we can see that they are actually extremely close, close enough that shaving off over five minutes of render time will definitely make it worth it. And honestly, if we don't think it's close enough, what we can do is we can go in and lower our threshold down bit by bit until we get where we want to go. So you might find that maybe a setting of low or medium was a cleaner image than the threshold being all the way up to one, which would make sense. And it's still at low, it's probably only going to take about 20 seconds, which is still way faster than five and a half minutes. So keep that in mind that it may be worth it to add a little bit more detail to still save a bunch of time, but not save as much time. If you're doing something with an animation that has like a thousand frames, having a render that takes 20 seconds versus a render that takes five and a half minutes makes a huge difference. Which brings us to the point of using denoise with animation. There are a few things you can do to actually make this work better. By default, if you're using denoise with animation and you hit render, you may notice there's some weird flickering going on. And that's because by default, random noise pattern is on. Uncheck random noise pattern, and that's gonna help smooth out and lock in that noise so that when you're denoising, it's not denoising different noise patterns each time. So you won't have this weird flicker. Now, that being said, it doesn't mean that it's gonna be perfect. You might find that after you're hitting render, even though it looks really clean on a static image, when you have an animation going, there's still some weird flickering going on because the denoiser is kind of freaking it out. Now, that being said, the way to fix this is to make sure random noise pattern is off, but also you just may have to decrease the threshold value a little bit lower than you would for a static image. You still won't have to do it as low as a very high setting. Normally a setting of low or medium will be good enough to get this away. So here on this dragon, I have a medium setting with denoiser on, with random noise pattern on, and you'll see there's a little bit of noise in there. And then here's one with noise pattern off, and you can see there's barely any flicker at all. So here with the medium, I'm not getting a six second render time, I'm getting a minute render time, but that's still faster than a five and a half minute render time. So there is always a give and take with render settings, but the good thing is with denoiser and the only attribute you're actually changing is one slider, it doesn't get much better than that when it comes to rendering. And rather than waiting for your entire scene to render out and testing a million settings, it could take some time. There's actually an easier way to do that, and that would be to use the render region. Now, this is little box it looks like the crop tool from Photoshop or something, and you click this button or hit R, and that's gonna open up this box in your render view. Now, this box is scalable and movable, and what it does is it tells Redshift to only render in this box. So what you can do is you can zoom in on areas like the mouth where we had a bunch of shadows or the floor where it was really reflective, hit render, Tweak your settings, move your box, hit render, move your box, and go ahead and compare those and see how they look and see how each setting is going to work. So you can really make honing in and finding the right render setting a lot easier versus waiting for your entire scene to render out to look at one area. The denoiser is not perfect. Like we saw with the animation, there are times where you might have to lower your threshold value in order to get a cleaner image. 
Denoiser also can sometimes smooth out small details in a bump map, thinking that the bump is actually noise when it's not. So you might actually need to lower your threshold value. Now, I will say that Optics smooths out bump more so than the Altus Dual. Altus Dual actually does a better job of keeping texture details than Optics does, but it does take longer. So again, give and take, use what you want. If you have a lot of small details, I would suggest using Altus Dual. If you have something like a clean floor that just has clean reflections, I would definitely use Optics. It's gonna be your fastest bet for sure. Besides just reflections and shadows and GI, the two other areas where the denoiser is gonna make a huge difference is with environments and depth of field. Now environments, I mean environmental fog and lighting. You can see here in this scene here, we've got an environmental fog as well as a depth of field on, and it's very noisy, but when we turn on the denoiser, it smooths out that bokeh really nice for us, as well as our fog is now nice and smooth as well. And we've got this really quick render with depth of field and fog. And if you ever used any other render engine, you'll appreciate how incredibly fast this is. Tell your own comments and tips because there are always a million ways to do things. And some people have some really great tips out there. Big thank you to our patrons and CG insiders. We could not do this without you guys' support. Thank you all so much. See you next time. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you want to see in the comment section down below, or you can leave a like or dislike. And don't forget to subscribe and click on that little bell icon for more videos and free stuff. There's loads of extra resources on our website and you can win epic CG prizes in our monthly challenges. Check out cgshortcuts.com for more details. Catch you next time.